I will open the meeting at 7.01 p.m. and this meeting is recorded. So Excellent. if you don't like that, you can not participate. Uh, we're gonna re review and approve the minutes from June 13th, 2023, which seems like yesterday. Any comments? Otherwise, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. All right. To approve the minutes. A second. <laughs> I'll second. I wasn't at the meeting, but I think we've decided that's okay. okay. That's okay, Denise Nash was there. Okay. <laughs> they okay. accidentally put your name. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't there. You just didn't know it. All right. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We have uh, if it's okay with everybody, if we could move up the resolution to fund rural aid to schools. Um, right now, is that okay with you, Shelly? Of course. Okay. All righty. Jessica, you're so, on. Would you like me to introduce it tonight? Yes, go right. for it. So, um, legislators for our district, Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford, are the sponsors of the Rural Schools Bill, which takes the recommendations from the Rural Schools Commission report about what schools like ours need. It includes fully funding rural aid to $60 million. Last year was $5.5 .5 million, so it's a huge increase of, towards what we need. Um, it includes strengthening the special education teacher pipeline. It includes full state reimbursement for out-of-district tuition and transportation. It includes a lot of things that will um, actually help all districts, not just rural districts, because some of what we need is what all districts need. Um, we are still trying to get a hearing for that bill by the Joint Committee on Education. Um, Joe and Natalie have asked us to take a series of actions, including passing this resolution, in order to keep pressure on the Joint Committee to schedule these hearings. Um, this bill was written for, dist for districts like ours, and um, this resolution was written, uh, the, the, the original template was written by Martha Thurber, who's a lawyer and the um, chair of the Mohawk Regional School Committee. Um, so, uh, I, I encourage you all to support the this resolution so that we can move forward the rural schools bill. <clears throat> Lots of good stuff in there. Uh, so we need a vote on this tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions about it? Have you all gotten to review it? Mm -hmm. Aware of it? Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion to support the resolution to fund rural aid to schools? A motion. Um, to support the resolution to fund rural aid to schools. All right, second that motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We'll That'd be send, great. I'll send you a docu sign to sign. Great. And then your names will be on it as well. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. All Thank right. You. Thank, you. Thank you. No problem. All right, and we'll skip back to our financial statement. All right. Which Shelly did send us ahead of time. I did, and I don't really have much to talk about. Um, I, the one I know, good. it is good. But I said to Darius, I'm like, it's so boring. I have nothing to talk about. So boring is okay with budget. Um, so it's 33. Boring <laughs> yeah. is good. good. It's like shepherding the problem. Boring is good. <laughs> no, that means you're missing something that's going on, is what that means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 33 warrants were signed uh, in late June, July, August, and early September. That was to close up fiscal year 23 and pay bills as well as start up the new year. Uh, the warrant total is $177,369.51. I did send you the choice and general fund expense accounts to look at. Um, Conway, as things stand right now, salary-wise, you know, generally we have some personnel changes that affect the budget at each of the schools, but there's nothing going on here that is a dramatic change. There will be savings from the nurse leader line because that position is now mm -hmm. part-time or, or stipend, actually. Um, so we'll see some salary savings there. <clears throat> um, the other thing is, I know heating fuel, we were way over budget last year because our price per gallon when we locked in the contract was significantly higher than the year before. Right now, rates are just shy of a dollar less than they were last year. So I have until the end of October to lock in. I'll probably try to do so sooner than later, and hopefully we aren't as far over as we were, and we'll, we'll find ways to make up those funds. 
Depends, unless you have specific questions. Do you lock in with one of those that if it drops, you get to pay the lower price? or No, because our prices are typically lower anyway. But, so yeah. be, just because we're part of the collaborative yeah. bid. Yeah. So we get to choose when we lock in, and it changes daily. Yeah. Um, so I watch it and you know, try to make the best decision I can. Yeah. And last year, I held off and held off. I actually think I locked in on like October 28th because... I just kept waiting to see if it was going to happen. It didn't really change. So mm -hmm. right now it's not it's not terrible. It's more than we two years ago we locked in at like two fifteen a gallon. Right now it's like three twelve. Mm -hmm. Last year it was three ninety one. Mm -hmm. So it's still a decent price even if we did lock in today. So yeah. working on those things. Um, revolving fund. We're in decent shape with all of our revolving funds. School choice balance is up. It's expected that even though we had quite a few students leave, um, whether it was sixth grade or families no longer here, Kristen did bring in enough students to offset. So our revenue should maintain uh, the same amount as prior years. Um, school lunch is free universally. I know we no longer have to talk about billing yeah. for school lunches. Yeah. What what? Controversy are we gonna have? I know and <laughs> we're gonna have to stir something up. I mean since boring I, is good. Boring is good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> since I've been here, Conway has probably had the school lunch account that was in the most deficit. And now, you know, we have a hundred thousand dollars we've been able to save over the last three years because we could supplement with other funding sources. So awesome. we did get a new range this, which is still having challenges. Um, but we are looking at what kind is it working or being delivered? Um, working. Lighting in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A new one is on order. They're replacing the one that is not working. It's been a snafu from the beginning. It's hard to make a lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so, it actually has been a problem. We're, we're still seeing, we're still making them. Yeah. Yeah. Jeannie, you know Jeannie. She's yeah. Bring him the food room. truck. Yeah. <laughs> So I you tend to be conservative and like to save in case there's an emergency, but it's a lot of money to hold in school lunch. So we're looking at what other things need to be replaced, even if it's like small wares that we haven't replaced in a while. So we'll Wasn't make use of those. Wasn't there a cooler issue at one point? Would you say Wasn't like, the cooler or something, the freezer? Yeah, something? that has been fixed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Jeannie has her wish list, you know, yeah. that's kind of ongoing. And yeah. She's very conservative in what yeah. she asks for. Right. Okay. Questions? Boring is good, huh? Yeah. All right. That's a great. <laughs> Thank you. And Kristen sent us principal's report, which was awesome. Um, I don't know if you all had a chance to review it. And if you want to give us the highlights. Oh, sure. Um, so I'll just give you the highlights. If you have any questions, let me know. So we have where we went from 18 uh, students to our school. I gave you a breakdown of um, the number of students per grade level and whether they're. We had a nice number of new Conway students who moved into Conway, which is always wonderful to That's see. Cool. As well as um, a nice amount of school choice families, which we love to uh, welcome to our school as well. So I gave you a breakdown there. So we have 18 new students plus. Any of our new kindergartners um, who weren't here in pre-K, and then of course 17 in our pre-K program. So we're welcoming many new families, which is very exciting. Um, we have a total of 146 students. We're back up again, That's which is cool. great. Um, again, I want to thank you for um, supporting the summer program this year. Again, we had approximately 32 students involved with the program. Again, when I first started, we had two that went to Deerfield. So we're thrilled with these numbers. The students do a lot of learning and a lot of fun. They almost don't realize that they're learning. Right. Is that, okay, good. good. Sneak good. it in there. We love their summer program. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, did, you read, did you read? <laughs> so thank you for supporting it. I mean, it's it's it makes a huge impact. And we have happy children here, which is wonderful. Uh, we're really working hard on data. Um, and we have all sorts of data points. We have recently fi finished our Dibbles data, which is um, an indicator of reading and uh, if it's where children are having difficult, it will say, you know, oral reading fluency or phonemic awareness. And we're able to really pinpoint and hone in on what we can need to work on 
with each child. We've had we had a couple data meetings already, and we have a plan, and we're ready to go. And and we're collecting more data. Data will be doing the EWA. Um, MCAS scores will be released eventually, but the school does have that data to work with. Um, so we're we, we have a dynamic team. Really, I mean, this is a team that is fantastic, and all they want to do is get even better. So really, a dream team. Really quickly, really excited. Uh, one of our parents wrote a grant, Cultural Council, Conway Council, uh, to bring Native artist and historian Jennifer Lee in for a two-day educational immersion on local Native history and culture. She'll be here on October 10th and 11th. She's bringing a wig one. Cool. And each class will have 45 minutes to go in, and she's going to be telling stories and they're going to be learning about her weaving the baskets. The wig one will be set up at recess so students can peek in and um, there's a, many resources. I added some links in case anyone's interested, which are great resources we're going to be giving to the teachers tomorrow to take a look at um, so that they can pick and choose which ones they might want to uh, share with the classroom. But we're really excited about this opportunity and we thank, thank the, both of those places for the money to allow this to happen. Our peer mediation program is up and running again this year. Jill Barnes, Joe Ciaramuddy, and Ashley Hannes will be leading the peer mediation program. I wrote down just, you know, you know this already, but the benefits of the peer mediation program, it's free, it's wonderful. Um, children learn conflict resolution skills, empowerment, improve relationships, reduces bullying and aggression, conflict prevention, lifelong skills, fostering a positive school environment, restorative justice, and contact, contact free learning environment. So, we're really proud of our mediation program here at Hamlet Grammar School. So that's the quick friend down the our report. Is it each grade is involved or is it certain peer mediators? Through? So um, usually students from fifth and sixth grade are chosen. Yeah. And um, each the teachers sort of decide based on the culture of the classroom, whether it's children are voted on by their peers or there's recommendations there's a whole interview process the students get trained in peer mediation i think they do about seven six six to eight hours of training and then the older kids the fifth sixth graders last year we just had sixth graders um lead the peer mediations which is really exciting for them and um, cool. you know when we have little issues on the playground with little kids we Okay, we're going to set up a time for you to go to peer mediation. Do you, would you like to go to peer mediation? Would you like to go to peer mediation? And typically, problems are always solved. You know, if it's not at the teacher level, obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a great little program. Yeah. It's the way the world should be, right? Totally. Holy High School has a very robust restorative justice program mm -hmm. that, you know, I've talked to the kids there. And they, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. They're really articulate. And yeah. Really, you know, they solve a lot of world problems. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Kristen? Yeah. Alrighty. Public comment. We have some public. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Any comment other than saying hello and participating in our meeting? Good job. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Great. Uh, unfinished business superintendency agreement update. Um, <clears throat> we were supposed to. I'm sorry. Let me wake up. Um, we met. Um, the group met last week, so I threw this on the agenda because we were posting things. Um, we did not come up with the final piece of the document. Back to the attorney with more questions. Um, you know, it was a good conversation. We're trying to be thorough. It's just taking longer. So hopefully at the next meeting, you'll be voting to see. Okay. All right. And capital update. Capital update. Is that so, a new stove? <laughs> you got a new stove. <laughs> I'm going to fire through this. But okay. what I did is I, um, as you can see up there, I did everybody's. So um, I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to go to the slideshow. All right. Frontier got new boilers. Yay. It's through pictures. So cool. you know, if you get tired, you're reading all day long, then you get some picture books. Actually, they were expensive. Yes, they were. But we did pay with them with school choice money. So 
nice. did not affect your town. Um, tennis courts were put in. Um, they should be actually finished next week. They're actually even further along than this picture that was taken last week. With pickleball. With pickleball oh, courts. Goodness. Wow. I can see some intertown. Uh, you guys got pickleball courts? Uh, uh, pickleball courts? Oh, I see. Well, we have was, our tennis courts that we turn into pickleball I'm courts. Was there yeah. with the pickleball crew, and they were they were talking about the date that this would become available. So oh, yeah. Now I know. They go town to town. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they painted part of the gym. <laughs> they painted the locker room floor. That's the boys' locker room. It's really gross. Um, <laughs> they we did a press box at uh, the top here. Um, it's actually done. It looks fun today. I went out and took a picture. I thought of it. Um, Deerfield did some brush removal in the front of their buildings and new plantings. They did 11 rooms with AC. They're trying to catch up to Conway. They got a new dishwasher. They had their floor refinished nice. the gym, very pretty. They got a new shed. How did we get that here? Yeah. Sunderland, <laughs> Sunderland just got AC in their library. <laughs> They're on the, just the beginning of the AC thing. They had to do some floor repairs that had some foundation issues. They were replacing their oil tank, which is underground. And it's a big, big, big deal for them. And currently we're in the process of looking over the bids. They came in yesterday. They had their phone system replaced. Um, got caught up to what's up here. Um, they had the interior of the building painted. It's actually 110 times percent better. Wow. I was getting really worn and tired inside. Wheatley had the floors replaced um, in their building so they could be easier to clean. The tile, while it was a better product, I gotta say, out of the gate, is harder to clean over time. Yeah. Um, they had a new sidewalk put in. Um, they had a safe schools sidewalk. But much like that way, it just kind of goes to a street where there's no sidewalk. But we won't break that. <laughs> they had a tree, a whole bunch of trees get struck by lightning. And so we have to take all those trees out. Yeah. But that's going to affect it again budget wise. But they painted their library and got new tables for the cafeteria. And I think they painted the cafeteria too. Mm -hmm. Conway. Now I slow down. Look at that beauty. That's nice. There's a generator because Conley, out of all of our towns, needs a generator. That is her darn choice. That's amazing. Because you had what? Wind, the rain. Town in the Northeast. You guys are. 2023. We're working on the t shirt. I mean, you have fire and right brimstone now. coming next up here. So that generator is yep. going to help you out there. Whoop. You have AC put in two classrooms. Um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit later. You have two classrooms left, I believe, Kristen, am I correct? Two oh, classrooms left yes. to be done. So you're That's almost great. done with the entire building. Okay, you you. Splits. That's cool. There's the new range. Looks pretty. Not really. You can see there's been some browning right here. That's because mm -hmm. there was a fire right there because there was some hooked up wrong. So um, we are returning that and getting a new one. It, it came wrong to begin with. It uses propane or gas? Propane. Yeah, gas. And they, it used came propane and it came, and it came gas. Right. So then we had to have a conversion kit put in, and there was problems with the installation of that. I mean, just, we shouldn't have a conversion kit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is a lot of back and forth. It has been stressed on in the kitchen and such. So, so we're not using it at all right now? We are using oh, it. Yeah, because it came over here. It's been oh, okay. worked on. And we turn off, they put oh, loose, and Jeannie turned off the gas. Um, Singer is the oh, company which bought out Kittredge equipment. Kittredge mm -hmm. was a local company, yeah. and they were bought out recently, which we buy the majority district-wide of our kitchen equipment from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one knows what happened. Wow. How, because we ordered the right one. The wrong one was delivered. Yeah. So they're sending us a new one. They've covered all the costs of oh. fixing so far. And well, look at Jeannie making those we'll trips. Look at there. We got a, it looks like a little French toast. Yes, yeah, French toast. Yeah. 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 Ended up baking it, which is good. Uh, the curtain. The curtain's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Jared yeah. shoots an air ball and it goes in it and bounces right back out. The short of the floor is way too shiny. The floor anymore. is also shiny. He this gets was, it really good in the sun. The curtain's redone too, right? The floor was polished, polished, not right. redone. Right. Bruce does it, yeah. yeah does it. But to be redone like that, yeah, I put that on our wish list. Yeah. Okay, but if you go do it, look at your hotel later. There's some tape marks where the tape was put down, pulled up. Right. There's flooring in the thing. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, oh. Bruce, that's Bruce's work right there. So we'll yeah. put it on the wish list. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we had flooring done in the classroom as we continued and the office got new carpeting put in. So this is the nurse's office. That's a student that wasn't feeling well. And then <laughs> you can see the flooring in the other classrooms that were done. Nice. Yay. And then a pest-free storage container. It's fabulous. Does that really exist? Yeah. I want one for my backyard, but that, that's the smallest size, so I don't think that'll work. Have you had any humidity issues? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, they they did the carpet, and then two days later, Kenzie came in in the summer, and she thought there was popcorn all over her floor. She's like, where the heck did this popcorn come from? It was all mold oh. from the community, so they had to redo it. Yeah, we have a hard time with that. We're talking about in, in the oh, container geez. was there. Don't share that other information. My God, it's a public meeting. <laughs> well, no, everyone has to see you. I'm sorry. Is in the container? I have no idea. What do you keep in there? I have no clue. Oh, uh, uh, children. Uh, <laughs> this is a public uh, meeting. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Desks, um, boxes of curriculum books. Curriculum books. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I got flustered because I was talking about the garbage and I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Flustered Kristen just needs to be quiet. It's okay. <laughs> it's already going worse. Looks like a very tiny storage container, but I can't believe it's test free. I can't wait to in. see. Right. Like, we'll see. See. But we're I think it is. a slice of cheese in there. We're going to see yeah. what happens. All right. <laughs> you just got to get it. This is my fifth meeting this week. I was going to say. <laughs> okay. So. Not pretty, but their partitions are beautiful. Huh? Where's Phil? He would be so happy. Oh my happy. God! This is for Phil. He, he would. For that. We need the flooring That's too. What I we do. Need I will say, when you see the flooring here and you saw the new flooring in Waitley, and those very, you know, you two small towns are competing against one another. Who has yeah. the? Uh, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, but that is the last. Oh, line. we didn't do bathroom flooring. We did other flooring. Yeah. We did. We, yeah, we, we did, did other flooring bathroom. Bathroom. So. Well, so that is, first, those look good. Yeah, those. That's good. That nice. is. That is it in pictures. See what happens when you ask Kristen, you get. I know you've been trying to teach me that, haven't you? That's also why they're rusty. That's awesome. Love it. Wonderful. Thank the only other thing that was taken care of was that we did have tree damage from one of the storms this summer, and it fell over the wellhead and some down there. And so they had the tree company come up. Because you had to keep your there's rules about yeah. uh, debris above the wallet. So they cut back and pushed that off and they cut they cleaned up a tree down that was on the soccer field. So I didn't have pictures of that because I yeah. It was a lot that day. Who does our mowing now? Do we know? Snow. Well they do. And we get it through the town. Like oh, okay. the town. Okay. Well we pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They do the we didn't use to pay it. for it, right? Correct. Yeah. Somebody figured out could fill us. No, I think we pay snow directly now, but I think that the snow that the town I don't think Bill pays that. I agree. I think yeah. that but we didn't use so to pay. I think the town used to do just cover it or they did it themselves in the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, they had the local guy, they had Tom Memorial Pitch forever, and then he sold his company, and I don't know if we had it after him. Um, it's much more expensive now. It's it's so much more expensive. Expensive. I mean, usually they're very, very yeah, expensive. All righty. We are on to new business and curriculum update. All right. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. I'm Laura Ramsey, the curriculum director for the elementary schools. And um, I would love to update you. I think I could talk about this a lot longer than anyone else. So I just want to say you can like click to advance the slide and if you <laughs> want to at any point. I'm gonna go back and include more things that I left out of my most recent presentation. Um, just trying to get the slide right. Anyway, last year was my first year with the district and um, I had thought that I would just take a year to get to know all the schools and the systems, but the teachers and the principals were very eager to get um, a new ELA curriculum and a new math curriculum um, for different reasons. But um, coming out of the pandemic, I think that that's kind of what happened was that things, um, uh, we had a plethora of riches because there were, but we also went in multiple different directions. And now that we're not in that situation anymore, 
it would be great for our students and for our teachers if we had some core pieces in common so that we can collaborate, so that we can do PD together, so that students moving in district can um, have the benefit of a seamless transition curriculum-wise, so kids going into the middle school come together. And um, also it's easier to use the data that Kristen mentioned when you're using it in multiple schools to assess curriculum. It's hard to assess curriculum in small schools if it's not consistent over time. So we formed two committees and the committees had people from teachers from every grade level from all four schools, special education teachers and specialists. And we did um, research and the principals um, made lots of time for the committees to meet, which was great because that's a lot of release time for two different committees for two or three hour meetings all year long. We researched the standards, we researched the curriculum that were out there, we visited schools, we wrote vision statements for our um, whole district around ELA and math. And first we were able to um, make selections around ELA. So um, this year there's a full implementation of English language arts curriculum K through six in all four schools. Um, <laughs> And I will tell you about math as well, because we did make a selection around math, but we're staggering the implementation so that um, teachers aren't required to lift two programs at once in the same year. Um, some teachers are opting to use part of the math program or all of the math program, um, but that's not a district requirement where we are doing a heavy lift around the English language arts. So, um, Last school year, all of the classroom teachers got trained in the Dibbles screener that Kristen mentioned, the quick interviews to three times a year, um, notice if there's anybody who needs an intervention. Um, and then K through two, and in some cases, grades three, uh, we're using UFLY, which stands for University of Florida Literacy Institute. We're using their um, foundational skills program. So that means that there's a half hour in those classrooms every day that is um, TPR, which stands for total physical response. The students are um, drawing that with in the air, they're drawing on whiteboards, they are using manipulatives like magnetic letters, um, and they're sometimes singing. And it's a highly interactive and explicit and systematic instruction around um, letters and sounds and phonemic awareness. And um, so that's how students are actually learning the mechanics of how to read. And it comes with decodable texts, um, which means texts that students can read after a lesson that only include the sounds that they've been explicitly taught. So there's nothing on the paper that they can't sound out based on what they've learned to that point in the year. I think the first decodables come after eight lessons and they can just begin to read very, very simple stories. Um, I could go on about that foundational skills program, but that's a half hour a day. And um, followed by that is a half hour of differentiation, meaning that you, kids aren't all doing the same thing. So there's one way in which we're sure that nobody's, that there's no hole in anyone's education. Like we go through it in order, so we're positive everyone's had a quick instruction, but then in another half hour, students are reading books of choice. Teachers are meeting with kids as needs be um, for projects, for fun, to review something, to preview something, and they're doing activities that are um, related to the foundational skills instruction. And then in a separate hour of the day, um, students are participating K through six, students are doing um, EL Language Arts, which is the program we selected for their central literacy module. And um, in all grades, there's four modules a year, and each module has a focus topic. And within that topic, the, the arc of that is to build background knowledge, do personal research, and then do a performance task at the end. So um, let's see, there's uh, one of the units in fourth grade is animal defense mechanisms. And so um, students will read a lot about animal defense mechanisms and the teacher will do some read alouds and they will um, develop background knowledge and then they will all research animals, different defense mechanisms. I think they specialize on one animal in particular, but then the students can read about any animal. 
And finally, they write a, their own choose your own adventure book about animal defenses. So whatever animal they study, they turn it into a fictionalized account and you can go this way if they use that defense mechanism and that way if you use another and they do some. So that's sort of the arc of the of the ELA and the reading and writing are integrated. Um, that's a switch because we used to teach reading in one part of the day and then writing <laughs> was totally separate, but now there's reading and writing entwined in these project-based activities. And then um, the first part of the module is more reading, and then the last part is more writing, but there's reading and writing throughout. And so all of the teachers in Conway are um, doing this and, and across the district, but I'm just increasing appreciation for what teachers are doing this year because it's a lot to learn. It's um, the teaching manuals are this thick. They provide so much background information for teachers on techniques you might want to try or extensions you might want to try. And um, I guess I could look at the teachers. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can affirm that it's a lot and um, it's exciting. I think there's a culture here of embracing the, the work, the priorities of the program really fit with all of our districts and um, Conway. So I think teachers are on board, but um, it's a big investment. It's really like a reorganization of teaching. Isn't it's it? a real or reorganization of teaching. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I think going about it the right way last year with the involvement of the teachers, like on the panel, the support of the, you know, of the schools to, to give them the time to invest into it. I mean, that's going to be paying dividends this year as you're trying to get buy in into it, that it was their peers who came up, you know, that had this, their voice in it. So it's fun. Yeah. We have an, um, last year we had the selection committees and this year we have the implementation committee. So we have two teachers from every school helping to give feedback on what do we need in terms of training or time or what are the hardest things. And then when we have our Friday early releases this year, um, the classroom teachers are meeting across the district to talk about um, where they are in the unit, in the program and what they, you know, we're going to start with something that's going well just to keep the spirits high, but then we're going to workshop things together because the first year, a lot of things are going to need to be workshopped and worked through, but everyone will be working on the same thing. So when teachers say, I find it really hard to find the um, the anchor charts, they could say, here's my solution, here's what I've been doing, and they can create shared folders together um, with resources. And uh, I think people are looking forward to that, although this may be like not the right week to say how much teachers are looking forward to it because it's like three weeks into the year and for finding out what's hard and the rhythm is going to come in January and February according to the schools that we visited last year it takes a couple of months to really get a rhythm with it and just so the committee knows um the implementation science that says a few things that are good to know one is that um one is that the first year you're really just trying it you're not getting all of the dividends to use your word. Um, and then the next year you're doing it because you tried it and now you're doing it. And then the third year you own it. And then in the fourth year you refine it. So it really will take four years until until it's in the in the air, you know, until it's not just something that's a little bit separate that we are doing, but it's actually how it all works. And um, the way that it improves um, like if you're measuring data around test scores and ELA, it's not likely to increase um, at the same amount for the next four years. It's likely to not increase our test scores very much at first and then to have a, a large leap at the third or fourth year. That's what that's what studies say happens, is that it I, you, you might think that every year it's gonna get better and better until you're at capacity for that program, but actually it's until you own it and refine it that you really see the difference. So. So we are invested for a long time. This year is really hard, but it's going to pay off over time. What districts did you go see it implemented in? We saw, um, I'm trying to remember, we went to the, for this program, uh, Shootsbury mm -hmm. School, and then we went to Shelburne Falls School. And then we talked to somebody in, um, I talked to some teachers, some, some schools, through my curriculum leadership committee that are farther away. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm spacing out of the name of the school where they do all the reenactments yeah. in the middle of the state. It, I'm going to say Shootsbury or Shelburne. What's it called? Stockbridge. Stockbridge. Yeah. No. Yes, Stockbridge. Um, 
Sturbridge? Sturbridge, yeah. yeah, yeah Sturbridge. That's close. You were very close. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> So a lot of it is um, meant to be experiential in the, the ELA language art piece, and so um, it really fits with their um, hands-on charter school, Sturbridge Village. Mm -hmm. but I also want to mention that um, you know when a teacher comes and they want you know certain professional development or certain um, ways that they think will be helpful in their teaching. I try to never say no because you know it's pretty admirable when someone says and said and Laura was very very flexible um this is the first time I can say that we did a project as a district and every one of the classroom teachers reading specialists special ed teachers were able to be in the school entirely were able to be on either the reading committee or ELA committee or the math committee or the implementation committee or the um, trial, you know, the trial basis. Okay. I mean, I'm always proud of the staff, but like to, to, for all of them to take that on together and Laura being flexible and allowing that to happen went a long way with the staff here. That's awesome. Yeah. Let me also say I'm not surprised that our staff accepted it and embracing the change and that doesn't surprise yeah. me at all. Yeah. How the kids received it. You know, I've been in quite a few classrooms of teachers who have started it, and, um, you know, for example, you, you go into first grade, I'm saying that because Jennifer's right there. They are so engaged and so happy up to, you know, I'll give you another, like up to Maggie West's fifth grade, um, where, the where again, the students are. So, you know, the I was blown away. I went into third grade. Um, the background knowledge that the students get creates a level playing field for the students so there's not an assumption that students know about this topic the background information is given to them for, you know three different ways so when i watched the students answer the questions i felt that for the first time in education we have a level playing field right now in this one particular lesson because they all took their own information or kids who didn't have the information got the information and this discussion was so um it involved so many kids that I know this sounds silly and I cry easily, but it literally brought tears to my eyes because I felt like it was a very level playing field. Mm -hmm. Students who usually don't answer questions, they kind of why they were answering questions with excitement, you know. And also these teachers present in such an exciting right. way. It's really yeah. I mean, you, you know, it's all it's a lot of it's about how Fun topics. Yeah. 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 Oh, it meets all types of learners. Feeling really good about just it. for the kids who that was a priority was making sure it was accessible and yeah. um it is yeah and that teachers are um there's a room in this program for teachers to be themselves mm -hmm. um you can speed up the delivery you can slow it down it's not they offer scripts but it's not a scripted program they offer scripts because they've thought of everything and they want to make sure that there's a high quality program being offered but there's um if you use the learning targets and the texts and the anchor charts there's a social emotional component that runs through the curriculum where they learn how to discuss disagreements around ideas and all. but if you follow just the basics teachers can bring them bring themselves to it like yeah and it's a lot of work but as sarah was saying she's making posters for fifth grades and the upper grades but she's laminating so next year guess what mm -hmm. those posters are all going to be on they're all going to be ready mm -hmm. um, yeah cool. sounds great yeah yeah, and I can tell you about math too if you'd like to know, but maybe you need to save that for another time or go. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Love math. So um, it took a little longer. We have two math people here. Oh, okay, great. great. <laughs> <laughs> we took a little longer to make the math selection. The the committees just were on different schedules, and um, and it actually worked out that we aren't doing two in one year i mean that would have been the decision anyway but we didn't know which one we were going to decide to do first and just having the ela decision get made sooner um and we had grants to fund pd last year so we started training teachers last year and ela is the is the big lift this year but we also had a grant for math and um for new math materials and so when we decided to use um, bridges for grades k through five and illustrative math for grade six we went ahead and um, surveyed teachers to see who would like to just have the materials this year to to try them out or to commit to one part of it and um, and so we do have some teachers who have just elected to try the new math programs this year 
So um, let's see, illustrative math is the sixth grade math because K five Bridges is only K-5. And um, fortunately, the middle school, our seventh and eighth grade, use this as one of their resources. It's not their only resource, but it's one of their core resources. So when students move from our sixth grade to their seventh grade, there will be some familiarity with the routines. There's always a warm up and an activity um, and a synthesis. And so they'll be familiar with with the rhythms of the math class. And the There's routine in math. There's routine. There's, routine. There's, There's thinking routines. Um, so both bridges and illustrative math, one of the nice things about these two programs being our elementary programs is that they have the very similar pedagogy. Um, it was really hard to choose between the two. And the reason why we chose bridges for K-5 and not illustrative math, one of the main reasons is that they have something called number corner. And so I'll tell you about routines by talking about number corner. Um, number corner is a 20 minute meeting every day and there are five workouts that build fluency and algebraic thinking and they pre-teach um, material to come they reinforce vocabulary one of the routines is called calendar math and so um, every day you turn over um, from a from a pocket chart the days of the month um, on the other side there's an image and at first those students don't know what the pattern is, but you started on like the fourth day of the month. So when the students are in a group on the rug, um, you start training them over, what do you notice? What do you see? What do you wonder? And then what's the pattern? And then students start to say what they think they see. And then students turn what they're noticing into equations. And so then there's a um, an anchor chart where volunteers come up and say, um, so I think in fourth grade right now, they're looking at these strange symbols it turns out to be Egyptian math Egyptian numbers that reflect the day of the month so on day one it says day one day two so the students start to figure out what the um what the Egyptian hieroglyphics mean and then they start to do equations to say um to represent the patterns on the board so that's one of the routines another routine is um working on a number pathway like in third grade they count by tens, they count backwards by tens, they, um, another month they'll count by twenties, and then time they'll count by twenty fives and count backwards by twenty five. So there's routines that build fluency and patterns. And that's what a number of teachers, I think every teacher at Conway is doing the number corner meetings this year, just electing to do that. Um, and then next year, the core program will have, um, <clears throat> has two parts. One part is called problems and investigations, and that's presenting the class with a problem and um, students usually engage with the problem before synthesizing strategies that work to solve it. But one of the equity pieces in math is making sure that multiple ways of thinking mathematically are honored and that teachers don't say this is the best way or the one way. Um, students learn what's efficient. They learn what how to recognize and they learn what's accurate, but they also learn some flexibility and they start to see relationships between different ways of solving problems. Um, I saw some kids working on one today where there was an irregular area and they had to decide if you could determine the area based on the irregular shape with partial measurements offered on the perimeter or not. And so they weren't even asked to figure out what the area it is, but do you have the information? And kids had lots of different strategies for arguing that you could or couldn't find the area of that shape. So that's the kind of big picture thing. And then it's synthesized and the strategies become posters so that there's a reference and there are solid places to look if if you want to check out a strategy or remind yourself of a strategy and then the last part of the math period is called workplaces which is basically activities and games that reinforce the strategies and the number concepts but um it has a very serious tone to it because it's not called activities it's called workplaces and they they go get a tray with the work they get a partner if it's a two-person workplace or they get three people if it's a, a triple workplace or sometimes there's a solo workplace and they they do the they do the work which is really a game mm -hmm. <laughs> so this doesn't sound at all like elementary school when i was in school. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's pretty impressive it's building yeah. critical thinking it is building critical thinking that's great right. problem solving yeah yeah Yep, and seeing fun. seeing mathematicians, seeing yourself as a mathematician in multiple different ways, recognizing your class classmates' mathematical thinking. Um, so they do representational work. They do 
Um, they also find examples of generalizations, so they learn to make conjectures and find evidence and proof, and that's part of the language of this program. Thank you for sharing. Yes, yeah, yeah, nobody clicked me, so. Awesome. Yeah, my son got to go last year to a music studio to learn how music and math are related because his math teacher also has a music studio in Amherst and it was like suddenly I mean he liked math anyway but after that it was like this is super cool you know yeah. how, how mm -hmm. that is integrated but is it within the committee's protocols for me to ask Jennifer if she wants to add anything because I know she's using it as a classroom teacher right sure did, did I miss anything down, or do you want to um amend anything I said no it's it's ever that sounded great to me oh, yeah, you did, we can't hear you I think you're muted, Jen. How about now? Yeah. No? Oh, it's on our end. We can't hear you. Okay. There you are. Oh, there no. You're on now. You're on. Okay. Now? Okay. Um, the only thing I'd like to add is I piloted um, some of Bridges last year, and it's the first year I ever had, I've ever lost track of time, and the first graders lost track of time, and we were seven minutes late for lunch. They were so enthralled with the math learning and the activities that we just were late and they didn't even care. I mean, that's high praise. <laughs> that's, awesome. Yeah. that's awesome. Okay. First grader can't care about lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? Thanks for coming this late yes. hour and yeah. presenting that. Very interesting. Very oh, good. Fun to hear. Thank you. Um, our last new business is heat pump, heat pump reimbursement rebate. That's exciting. Super exciting. It's super exciting, but not super good news. It's very disappointing, but <laughs> we're living through it. You want to do it? No. Yeah. We don't get that from. Correct. We Why? You're going to do it? I, I can't remember in a meeting here with people watching. All right, so we get the rebate, right? So we, our planning was that we pay for these heat pumps, we get a rebate, we invest that money directly back in. Right. Well, I'm gonna do my best here, right? So it's like doing it in front of the teacher here. Well, apparently, um, some accounting um, believe that it's the proper accounting that the money has to go back to town. It can't go back to the school. Because the town funded it through warrant, even though the capital stabilization fund was used, we asked for the money from the town, so it has to return back to where it was raised. Can't the town then gift it back to the school? There, that was the original so account. there is a, in, in the accounting world, there is a difference of opinion, and um, some would and some won't. And hearing both sides talk about it, they both say both sides are correct. No, one says that the more stricter side is the correct side that we should be giving back to town. According to our auditors, like that's what should happen. Oh, I can see Does that it goes back to the town, that? but the town could give it back to our well, son. We could request We are going to request. I think we're going to, well, I don't know what exactly how we're going to go. Back into the stabilization fund, maybe, right? Um, so they sh they should deposit it back to the stabilization fund, but in order for us to access it again, it has to go another warrant. Right. So we could go to and to we could go to the special town meeting, or we could wait until next year. Currently, we we have to pay for it. Um, they were both already installed, right? So They're we They're yeah. working. assume They're you're getting it went huh? forward and had them installed. So now we have the bill. So we paid for it with school choice funds. And either it's a wash, and we just pay that as it is, and we're out that money um, for how much money? Fifteen. Seventeen. Specific. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say twenty. <laughs> I think yeah, we should ask. Fifteen, give or take a couple grand. Um, so. I mean, it's really just a process thing. Correct. It's also it's a so process. right, right. So we'll it's have a more to, complicated process than we had hoped for, but it still should be a process. Right. And so and I, and I don't disagree. The the other factors that are gonna be on the table. So what by the time 
the, the winter town meeting is usually what in in December. Have they had one in? Or they? Yes, last year. Remember, we didn't go in the frontier capital oh, stabilization didn't pass. <laughs> great. That could be a fun meeting, apparently. I've heard. So, but anyway, so we have some time to put together exactly what we're going to but we'd have to go back to the town desk to get the money. Well, and the thing and is, meanwhile, the town is, as you read the front page of the paper, was to say yesterday, you know, they're concerned that they're not going to get the FEMA. So they might be dead broke. And so it might be the year where we, you know, we're going to have to have those conversations with account officials about it may be proper, but it may also be the year where they're going to say every $10,000 is going to mean something to us. What are we going to do? So we're going to have to kind of feel that out. In a normal year, if it was three years ago, I'd say, you know, absolutely. And I actually think, so two things. One is we are going to be looking at the capital list and updating in the next month so that we can decide on projects for next year. It may be that something else is prioritized and we need that 17000 for something else and yeah. not the last two AC units. Yeah. And two, it may not go directly back to the stabilization fund. The town could deposit it to wherever their free cash holding is. And then at town meetings, if you remember in the past, there has to be a motion or a warrant article to move money from free cash back to the stabilization fund. So they technically have a right to, at this point, to put it wherever it they want. Wherever they want, wherever they want. And we could ask them to move it back into our stabilization fund since that's where it was paid from to begin with. It was 45000 It had to be paid up front. So there was a conversation with the town accountant of, well, you should have reduced the warrant request, but you can't because you have to pay in full. Right. You don't necessarily know what your rebate's going to be. And they can pull the rebate. I remember you saying not knowing. So we had to request the full 45. The full 45 got paid from stabilization mm -hmm. and then seven and then ended up coming up. So. The 10. You know, we're for, yes. We're fortunate that we could still afford to do it Very because much, there's so. only two units left to do so we're ahead of the game but unfortunately <laughs> have you talked to veronique about it yet mm -hmm. okay have you asked her to deposit like do we need to send a formal letter to ask her to deposit into the stabilization account so i sent a formal letter saying because talking to was it the attorney or was that the I account? Talked to an we talked to an not auditor, the town's auditor, not the town auditor, but a different auditor, and said, "How can we do this?" And he said, "Well, the select board can just transfer that in if you ask to request that." So I sent a letter to the select board on behalf of all of you. And I see some of you guys. Um, that basically said, "Please, you know, this is what's going on, so on and so forth." Their town account disagreed. Well, and he also called, called um, and he called DOR. DOR. And then he called DOR. Who and does DOR. excess and deficiency certification and DOR. And the auditor that I talked to did say, technically, this is how it should go. And does everybody there do are it? Does everybody some, do it this way? No. Because you're funding the same project. It's not, it, we didn't take the money to go do something else. So, right. you know, I, I think. When you read the warrant money, the warrant is. I disagree with it, but I'm not in accounting. So I think but I look at the the, the, the warrant said we were used forty five thousand dollars to put in AC. I got it on sale and I buy an extra one. You know what I mean? Right. Who is that? You know, basically, you know, is sale and a rebate the same thing? Not according to accountants. I'm not accountant. Right. 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 So, but yeah. anyway, so it's yeah, it's one of those things where they're going to get audited. And they want they want their books a certain way, and, they, they and accounting is. 99% of the time, black and white, but like there's not a lot of gray in the county. They love so. gray administrators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheating, right? Just as I just said. Try the mental health clinics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we just wanted you to get an update on it. Mm -hmm. Seems like there's a way to work it, but everybody has to work <laughs> creatively with numbers. Yes. But anyway, we'll see. And I think the town will still get some funding from the disaster. I can imagine think. not, but if they don't, yes. we're going to sell a lot of t-shirts. Mm. We're what? We're working on a t-shirt design to have, you know, sell a lot of t-shirts. The wettest town in the Northeast for in the July, July 2023. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very interesting design goal. Mm -hmm. 
So all the work on the 116 and everything, that's state, right? That's not pen. State, that's state. But so they did work on, the state did the work on Waitley Road for us to get up and running, I'm sure. They're charging us. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's going on with Hoosick. You know, Hoosick was like a cliff. Yeah, it's still, well, my kids live on Hoosick, but right. it's still close on the one end. It is. Yeah. That's Deerfield. Where the, the where the cliff is? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't saying. sure how far down it was. Yeah. My kids live on that line. Deerfield. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I almost never see that wasn't done. That wasn't for. Same stuff. Okay. Same thing. Um, I do not have a report. Is there a collaborative report? I don't have a report, but I did send the executive um director's report mm -hmm. to all of you and i think the most important thing in there is just that there is the member districts benefit brochure so it does mm -hmm. kind of just it's an overview it's short but it's like highlighting what the services are that they provide to their member districts including us so they still do a lot of training her yeah um and darius already gave us lots of reports so Mm -hmm. And you sent us one too. I gave you a superintendent report. You did. Mm -hmm. um, I do just want to highlight a few things on it. One, okay. even though we have a joint meeting on the 28th, if you can make that. Regarding the equity audit, that's the only thing on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And what time is that again? Is it six o'clock on the 28th? Yes. And so. You get an invite for that, right? Yeah, I'll do a brief on today as well. Um, and so I do ask you to bring your questions and comments regarding the audit um, because it'd be good to have a conversation around it rather than just a um, straightforward presentation. Mm -hmm. We don't like boring around here. No, we don't. Um, I also, my um, report shows you that we did receive rural aid. Um, and it, you know, with, they, with the, they budgeted at 15 million. And so we had 28,000. This year, instead of the fourteen thousand we got last year, so it's a nice increase. Um, again, we're going to have to have a conversation during budget season about whether or not they did not put it inside Chapter Seventy. So it's a it's a, it's an alone um, funded thing from the state, so we don't know what they're going to fund it next year. But at the same time, I know folks are going to want us to be spending this to some level to be looking at offsetting our budget and costs. We'll offset our heat pump. <laughs> we, de we definitely could spend it right on that if you wanted to. Um, and maybe it, again, it's not, it's not a crazy idea there because, you know, but I did want to talk about, you know, Chapter 70 came in and um, we will be um, just thinking about $60 per student. So we got, you know, $3,960. So our budget last year went up by. <laughs> at sixty thousand, right? At least yeah. went up by sixty thousand. The state's chapter seventy funding, which is their portion of your budget, went up by just about four grand. So there's a big, a lot of conversations happening, and, and at the state level, that we are not the only towns that are in this what we call home har old harmless area, where because of our decrease enrollment, we only get the per pupil funding. Under and this is Student Opportunity Act too. So when you talk about the Student Opportunity Act, it's going to save all education. It really is just saving, saving where most of the students are, the big urban areas of the state. Um, but it's really hurting districts that are old harmless. So there's actually there, the MASC just sounds like today. I don't know if you've ever listened about it, but they are trying to pass legislation to examine this and to correct this. So, um, so you know, so. Um, the rule aid helps because you add the rule aid with the, you know, we, we make $32,000. So we make, you know, almost over a third of what our growth of our budget was last year is, is coming from the state, but one of them isn't guaranteed to come next year. Whereas we will continue to build off the chapter 70. It continues to go up. The rule aid does not. So if you use the rule aid to offset your budget and if you don't get it next year, then you're going to have a double deficit. It's a good idea to put it against the AC. Right? right, so that's why it's good to use it for one-time things. And so what we've been doing across the board in all the districts, and we've been doing it since COVID, is that we've been using these ESSER funds and other things to not use school choice, to not, and we've been building up kind of a safety fund on that to take care of a lot of capital projects, um, you know, 
and some of those other funds have rules they only can spend a certain amount in capital and certain amounts of things like so but it is a lot of conversation about how to do those things but it's also good for you folks to, to kind of understand the dangers of using it different ways because people are going to start asking you got that rural aid why is my tax dollar not going down and to what level should it go down that's where those are gonna be conversations this year and at the same time we'll keep an eye um what's going on in the state house for next year's budget you know early that's what we when we talk to our state reps and, and such we have to have the conversation are you going to level at least level fund really if they guaranteed that then we could drop them. we could you know, we could lower percentage, oh, percentage point right away could be done just on rural aid but they got a promise of that the following year because a lot of schools didn't do that and we're kind of saying this because you're going to watch the budgets happen a lot of schools around us and i just know through conversations used S for money and used rural aid because they had to right their operating budget right and now this year esser has gone or almost used up or, you know we're a little bit used to that this year as well um in those other schools they're going to do massive cuts they're going to somehow make up the difference or find another funding source right so and right now there's no funding source coming so and then the final thing my report said well two things one is that the tax collections for this fiscal quarter are low are below expert or for massachusetts so that's the early indicator that we're going to have a tough fiscal year next year I mean, our revenue the state's revenue we're not collecting as many which taxes they predicted so the revenue is going to be down well, how's so that with millionaire tax and marijuana both of those things are supposed to help our schools um oh you have to jobs are you know paying, what, so, so I, I think the millionaire's tax is partially how the universal free lunches is being funded supposedly that's correct that's right remember the millionaire's tax also goes to transportation so they got to split it between the two so the superintendents get we met with the taxpayers association which is a private group that keeps an eye it's a watchdog about of the massachusetts how massachusetts doing its uh its budget and governance of that and they kind of talk about it and said it's a mess they don't know how they're supposed to use it they don't know how they're supposed to divide it up and so the fact that they're using it toward the fact that, it's, that the governor said that they're using a percentage of it toward it she didn't indicate what percentage because they don't know how they're supposed to Break it up. There's no. They pass a bill without those rules in place, and so now they got to pass bills with those rules in place. And you know that's a political mess. And so, and then if you listen, to it, I can't go and repeat what they said because it's very complicated. But the actual getting the money is also complicated because it's not clear. So anyway, so yeah, there's a lot more in, in in motion there too. So it's not as clean. Would be a tax like mine taxes i pay is very clear yeah. and then there's so and then they also very, they're also very good about you know the fear of millionaires um getting around that tax well, and they're actually talking about how that is happening and then they said they were honest about like, right. there's a debate Thus, there's a debate millionaires. right well <laughs> if you have two houses you change your residence right and so but they also said there's some different data around that whether or not that actually happens or not and there was you know two people presenting had different opinions on that one, yeah. one was strong that they will they won't collect as much as they think they're going to collect anyway that all said um well but legalizing marijuana certainly when it started in uh colorado you know they put the money directly to school budgets that they raised from the taxes and pot shops and i thought that was what was gonna part of what also was supposed to happen with funding in because they're heavily taxed yeah. And that money was supposed to go to education. So I see a pot shop on every corner, including Deerfield now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where's the money? Don't we should know. be asking, where's the money? Don't know. Oh, it's similar. It's, it was now it's using being used for education, but they pulled the other funds that were previously. The, the thing is, they, they pulled different the things. So it's kind of like what we were just doing. Right. Yeah. So you talk about the millionaires tax about you know transportation which people aren't talking about as we put more and more electric cars on the road where do we get the major a lot of our taxation for transportation is the gas tax so if we start selling less gas we got to find a different way to put revenues to our roads so where is that going to come from and so you know they're talking about tolling systems and stuff but they're going to have to do a major change in how they fund the road system if they stop if they take away the gas as the major 
So I don't know, I don't know the statistics of that, but I just heard people talking about it. Like there are a lot of changes and there's no planning in that area. Yet. Right. You know, so they're gonna put transponders in their car and they're gonna fill you per mile or something. You want at least something like that. Oh gosh. Well, it'll be like riots coming out of here because I said that. I made that up, but I, you know they're going to come up with something. Yeah. And then the final thing is that, um, speaking of riots, um, my contract is up this year. You guys have till January to decide if you want to renew me, which means there's probably going to be a meeting or two between now and January to the collective committees have to get together to decide whether or not they want to renew my contract. We hope we'll have that new agreement in place so that we can use that. To kind of dictate how it works um but you my contract says you have to let me know by um january who schedules those meetings frontier usually takes the lead on that <laughs> okay all right you all be in a meeting like what are we here for again i don't know how it works <laughs> gotta make sure the meetings happen <laughs> Where nobody comes <laughs> are you interested in continuing yes i will be sending a letter to the you don't want to be superintendent of amherst or anything okay. well, not right now not right now we have to dismiss this meeting. We do. Okay. <laughs> we can't just walk out. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. Thank you very much.